Hi, it's Grace. Welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're all doing really well. Firstly, I want to say thank you so much for 3,000 subscribers. That was such a nice surprise that happened to me on Monday. I feel like I got a lot of new people um, after Jen Campbell shouted me out. So yeah, if you're new, welcome to the channel. I hope that you enjoy it. I've got a couple of videos that I want to film now that I've hit 3k. I'm going to do another booktuber recommendations video and I want to do a 3k Q and A. I love the way that rhymes. So please feel free below to ask me any questions about anything bookish related or not that you'd like to ask me and I'll also ask over on my Instagram which is GK Reads on the day that this video goes out if you'd prefer to ask over there. So let's talk about the books I read in the second half of March. I will start by talking about any books that I haven't already spoken about in a vlog and then we'll run through the books that I've read in vlogs. So the first book I want to talk about is The Girls by Emma Klein. So this book came out in 2016. It feels like longer ago than that. Um, and it was a huge book, like it was everywhere. Everyone was reading it, everyone was really enjoying it. And I, for some reason, didn't pick it up, which is strange as this is a book about a cult, basically. And I love reading books about cults. It's a coming of age story. I'm not sure why it took me so long to pick it up. And I think actually, maybe that was a mistake. I think I would have enjoyed this book more had I read it in 2016. I didn't dislike this book. I'd give it like a solid 3, 3.5. I just wasn't really like blown away by it. So in this book, we're following a character called Evie Boyd and it's kind of dual timeline between the summer of 1969 when she was 15, 14, um, and then the kind of present day where she is a grown adult and she is the child of divorced parents. She's pretty wealthy, but she lives with her mother. She doesn't have a great relationship with either of her parents and she's feeling very like disillusioned. She's fallen out with her friend kind of has nothing to do this summer and she gets sucked into this group of I was like can I call them hippies they're like this traveling commune kind of group who are all like f the man peace and love kind of vibes throughout the novel you're kind of like constantly foreshadowed that this group are going to end up doing something really really bad this book is basically like a a reimagining of the Manson family killings and I think perhaps I knew too much about the Manson family killings and I think perhaps it needed to be like more similar like a direct retelling or more different this was just kind of like very obviously based on that but then there were some changes and so I think I wasn't massively gripped by it one because I know what happened with the Manson family two because as I say you always kind of know that Evie isn't like as involved I did find it like quite compelling to see like oh how is it all gonna shake out like how's it all gonna play out but like I say there just wasn't that much grippiness and I wouldn't have minded that actually like I don't need a book to like shock me surprise me so it wasn't just that it was just like everything in this book was like good but not great like I thought Evie was an interesting character I thought it was well written I particularly liked one thing I did like is Evie's relationship with one of the women in the group Suzanne um and how that plays out the dynamics around that compared to the dynamics around like the leader of the group Russell who everyone's kind of obsessed with and in the thrall of I thought that was good and yeah it was it was well written it was very evocative of the 1960s but I just was never like blown away like I was never massively hooked I didn't think the writing was like exceptional I didn't think Evie's character development was anything amazing I don't know it's just hard to talk about because I thought it was good I don't really have anything bad to say about it but I didn't love it. It wasn't like a new favourite. So that was The Girls. Definitely worth a read. Super readable. Enjoyable for sure. But it just didn't have that like little extra something that I was kind of hoping that I would. Okay, then let's talk about a book that I read on my Kindle. It comes out in April. This was an e-arc from Fourth Estate and it is Early Morning Riser by Catherine Heine. I love this book. I kind of like talked about it in a recent video. But yeah, I gave it five stars and I I absolutely loved it. As soon as I read it, like I knew this isn't going to be a book that like everyone likes or that everyone would give five stars. And obviously I'm not sure if you follow CJ Reads, you should, but she read it in a vlog and was like, oh, I hate it. And I was saying to her on our group chat, like, I don't expect you to like this CJ. So I'm not going to be hurt by the fact you gave it two stars. Early Morning Riser is, I keep comparing it to like Gilmore Girls. So it's set in a small town in Michigan and we're following a woman called Jane who moves there um, in her late twenties. She's a teacher. She doesn't really know anyone and she kind of gets into a relationship with this man called Duncan and it plays out over like 18 years I think of just their life in this small town what happens with their relationship the other characters but it was just so charming I think it was just exactly what I needed like literary fiction that is warm and funny charming it was just so charming this like little town very easy to read but was kind of like touching at points I'm sure some people will think it's like really sentimental 
an OTT, but I really liked it. I think I would have given it like a high rating, like a four anyway, just because I really liked the atmosphere and it was just a good kind of character drama. But the thing that tipped it into a five for me is that I found this book hilarious. Obviously humor, super subjective. Other people might not find it as funny as me, but this book had me laughing on like almost every page or I'd be laughing like every page and then there'd be like a more serious little section and then I'd be laughing again. It was just so refreshing. I haven't read a book that I found that funny in so long. It was just an absolute joy to read, honestly. It put me in such a good mood. And it wasn't even that I particularly like loved the characters. So like Jane and Duncan, this couple, I like Jane, she's a bit annoying. I like Duncan, he's a bit annoying, but it was just more like the way they all interacted in this group. And yeah, I'd highly, highly recommend it. I haven't read Catherine Heine's first one, Standard Deviation, but I'm definitely going to now because yeah, this was an unexpected, joy. I didn't think I would love it this much and I did. Maybe it was right place, right time. I don't have to justify myself for liking this sentimental book, okay? I loved it and I recommend it. So the final book that I read that wasn't in a vlog was The Scapegoat by Daphne du Maurier. So this one was chosen by you all when I did my You Choose What I Read in March video and I'm so glad you did. I'd been putting this off because I'm a huge Daphne du Maurier fan. I think I've read four of her novels and I absolutely love her. Like My Cousin Rachel's one of my favorite books of all time. I love Rebecca, I love Frenchman's Creek. And so I got this for Christmas, finally picked it up and I really, really enjoyed it. I mean, I think it's hard for me not to enjoy Du Maurier. Like we have a thing going on now, she's so reliable. I actually think this book is a lot more interesting than the blurb makes it sound. So the blurb basically says that you're following this English man called John who is in France and he meets this French man who looks like identical to him. And they're like, what the hell? Like. What a weird coincidence. So they spend the night getting drunk together. John wakes up in the morning and the Frenchman, Jean, has stolen his identity and like left him there. And actually the blurb does say John steps into the Frenchman's shoes and faces a variety of perplexing roles. So take that back. I just didn't read that last sentence because I hate reading the blurb, but I guess I thought it would be more about like John desperately trying to get his own identity back. Whereas what actually happens is he just becomes Jean and he moves into his house and he lives with his family. And that was just such an interesting exploration. I really loved it. And because it's de Maurier, the house that he moves into is this kind of old chateau and Jean's family. There's like a scary matriarch, a wife, his brother lives there, his brother's wife, his sister, his daughter. So there's just all these characters. There's obviously a lot of family secrets that John isn't aware of and he has to kind of pretend to be Jean. So that really worked for me because one thing I hate in books is like someone trying to prove their innocence or like convince everyone of something. Whereas this, it was just fascinating the way that John was just like, okay, I'm gonna live this man's life then. And the way he gets kind of like attached to the characters and this family have this big history in this place. Daphne du Maurier is just so good at tension and you really feel like, okay, something dark's happening here and it all kind of comes out. And yeah, I just loved it. I think for me, Daphne du Maurier, while she's obviously like a brilliant writer, she's just like so solid on plot. Like I really feel like I'm reading like a story when I pick up a du Maurier. I'm not gonna be distracted by the prose. It's good, but it isn't like flowery. Line isn't necessarily gonna take my breath away. It's just a vehicle to like push on with the story. And so I find her books so, so escapist when I read them. I just feel like I'm shutting out the world. I don't need to concentrate massively, but I'm in this story that I'm really compelled by. And yeah, so when I picked this up this week, it was just like the perfect time for me to read it. And I had such a good time with it. I'm really not sure what I wanna rate this one because throughout the reading experience, I loved it. And I think this book did so many interesting things. I was obsessed with the character of John and all of the characters in here was so interesting and good. And the ending was like not what I expected. I didn't necessarily not like it. So de Maurier is quite known for her very like open endings and her very dark endings, at least in the books that are more like thrillerish. And so I was like, stuff is gonna kick off at the end of this book. And like it kind of did, but it didn't. Uh, and obviously I'm not gonna spoil it, but the way it ended was like a little bit quieter than I expected and a little bit more I guess like philosophical. I just don't know how I feel about like the final decision that John makes. Part of me was disappointed by it. Part of me was like, okay, that's really interesting. Took me by surprise. So this is a four, I think. I think it's hard when you've read a lot of books by one author because I'm like, well, do I love it as much as that one? And that one is a four. And as I say all the time, ratings are so arbitrary. So I gave this a four on Storygraph. I love De Maurier. I love that I have so many more books of hers ahead of me because yeah, sometimes they're just exactly what I need. And I'd really recommend this one. I think if you like her more like they're called like thrillers, but they're not very action packed. They're like tense, drawn out character studies. Um, if you like 
her book so I like that you will really like this and I'd love to know what you think of the ending because she surprised me a little bit and I'm not sure how to feel. Okay so now we are on to the books that I've already talked about in vlogs so let's start with the Irish Readathon. I participated in the Irish Readathon, read three books, really enjoyed them all. Um, so I read, yeah I'll link all of these vlogs down below, but I read Don't Touch My Hair by Emma Beery. This is a non-fiction kind of memoir, kind of social history book that specifically looks at the history of Afro hair and I guess how that plays into current day racism, the legacy of slavery, anti-blackness. And it's a very short book, <laughs> I did not make it look short, but it's a really slight book and it was just packed full of fascinating information. I found it more academic than I expected to. There was some memoir in here from Dabiri about like her own experiences growing up in Ireland as a mixed race girl with kinky hair and yeah I think that she took what you might think is like a narrow topic, like a, a small topic of like oh just looking at hair but for one there's so much kind of historical interest around around that um, but also she uses it to extrapolate out to talk about a lot of wider things. So she talks about the history of you know relaxing hair, straightening hair, the way it's been seen as unprofessional for a long time, the negative connotations around that it's a time consuming hair to have and how that plays into like colonialism and capitalism. She talks about the modern um, conversations around like appropriation and social media like black fishing. There was just a lot packed into here and it was really really well thought out, really well articulated. I felt like I learnt a lot about kind of the specifics of Afro hair and historical kind of points of interest that I wouldn't have known about. I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. My only criticism was that I would have liked a little bit more memoir. Like I say, it is a fairly short book. And whilst I wouldn't have wanted to take out any of the really fascinating stuff about history and colonialism and even like maths and pop culture, like all that stuff was great. I would have also liked to have a little bit more memoir. And I think when Dabiri looked specifically at like Ireland as a place to grow up as as a mixed race girl in a very white society was really interesting. So I would have just liked a bit more of that. But yeah, I would highly recommend this one. I also read Scenes of a Graphic Nature by Caroline O'Donoghue. This is a kind of contemporary, bit of a mystery, bit of a drama um, set in the west coast of Ireland. Primarily, we're following a young girl who is a filmmaker, a young woman, I should say, who's a filmmaker who is half Irish through her father, but has never been to Ireland. And then she gets the opportunity to go to Cork Film Festival with her best friend and co-director. And so she does. And while she's there, she starts learning about the kind of secrets of this place because her dad came from an island off the west coast of Ireland called Clipham. And when he was a child, he was the only boy um, to avoid dying in the schoolhouse when there was a carbon monoxide leak. And so her dad's really ill as she travels there. And as she gets to the island like people are a bit strange with her, she's an outsider, she has this connection to Clipham and this kind of conspiracy starts to play out. I really just love Caroline O'Donoghue like as a person, as a writer, she's also a journalist and with her books I'm always like ooh this could have been like a perfect amazing read but it's never quite there yet but she's only written two adult novels and I feel like with every one she gets like closer to being that for me. So this book was kind of a book of two halves, the first half I was like really not convinced. I found the introduction of this mystery like really heavy-handed um, and just strange and kind of like shoehorned in so then it could suddenly be like I'm going to investigate this thing but then in the second half enjoyed it so much more, loved they were on this island in like a closed community, the mystery started to become like a lot more compelling, it didn't have any of the problems I had in the first half of the book and I really liked Charlie as a character, it explored some really interesting things around her as a gay woman who has this best friend who is straight but kind of like uses Charlie at times. It had some really really interesting exploration around the idea of like Irish tourism, this connection that so many people around the world have to Ireland, a kind of sense of false homeliness and how potentially that's like exploited by the tourism board, that's what they want you to think and kind of glosses over the very real issues within Irish history particularly around like women's rights and even to the present day like direct provision. So I think it was really smart with everything it was saying about Ireland and I found that really enjoyable. And the mystery was like, it was satisfying. I read this book super quickly and by the end of it, I was gripped and I did like Charlie as a character. It was fun. I gave it 3.5. And yeah, I'm looking forward to whatever she writes next. Then I read Milkman by Anna Burns and I gave this book five stars. I think it is a full masterpiece. Um, I spoke about it a lot in the vlog, so I'll try not to talk about it too much here. It's set in Northern Ireland in the 1970s and we're following a young, nameless protagonist, everyone in the book is nameless or has kind of a nickname and she is 18, Catholic and then basically this 41 year old paramilitary who everyone calls the milkman becomes obsessed with her, he starts kind of like following her, trying to talk to her, she's not interested but 
rumors are like abound in this community and so everyone starts to think that she is in a relationship with the milkman no one will believe her and we follow kind of how that despite the fact none of it's happening affects her life but also just a kind of picture of this community who are basically like at war like if you know anything about the troubles um which i think you probably do need to know a little bit about to get the best out of this um it's like a very particular extreme set of circumstances it's written in kind of a stream of consciousness style so i'd say it took me about 100 pages to get into it but after that i was hooked the language in this book is just incredible like there's such rhythm to it it just felt like lively and inventive i listened to the audiobook a little bit and then wanted to read the physical book but then didn't want to not listen to the audiobook so ended up doing them at the same time which i've never done before but i loved it because anna burns narrates the audiobook i think the exploration around how gossip works the like inevitability of rumors and a kind of sense of a lack of agency for our protagonist because of this society that I guess relies on and values division um and you know protecting yourself by implicating someone else it's really interesting on women in this society and the kind of like violence sexual violence that was very frequent and the way that she doesn't feel like she can say the milkman has done anything because he's never touched her and he's never made any sexual comment it is it does have sadness difficultness frustration violence definitely but it also has like kind of some humor in it it's witty it feels just very almost like theatrical dramatic she's taking like the mundane interactions of this place that is in an extreme political scenario and making it really like sweeping and epic but also like really gritty i, I can't explain it i just love this book highly highly recommend it and then let's talk about the books that i read in my taylor swift readathon which went up on monday again i'll link that down below and just try and be a little bit more brief here i listened to how we fight for our lives by Sai jones and i absolutely loved it gave it five stars this is his memoir about being a young black gay man growing up in, in texas and yeah it was just stunning it's pretty short he is a poet so his writing is just like incredible um i actually loved listening to it it was narrated by him and it added a lot to it it felt like you were listening to i guess like performance poetry it's about kind of family obviously his sexuality feeling like out of place in his world also as a black man and how that kind of intersects with him as a gay man the experiences of like fetishization that he's had and again that feeling of i guess alienation from a lot of the religious um white southern communities that he experiences throughout his life it's a lot about grief a lot about writing obviously because he is a writer and it's a memoir honestly i can't recommend it more it had that thing i love where he's talking about like little small anecdotes but they like weave together perfectly yeah it was amazing then i read to all the boys i love before by jenny han i never read ya um but i love the lara jean films so much and this was a joy honestly just nice well written moving like a good kind of ya romance drama but also a really beautiful like family story i loved all the characters especially like in the family just made me smile i thought lara jean as a ya protagonist was really interesting she felt very different to the protagonist that i used to read when i was reading ya i liked that it talks a lot about her korean culture yeah it was just it was just really fun and nice read it in a couple of hours one afternoon and it made me smile then i read open water by caleb azuma nelson and this was the third five star i read three fiction books that were five star this month and yeah they were all in the second half of the month so milkman early morning riser and open water all very different books so this is a really beautiful really short kind of poetic novel that is written in second person and follows the developing relationship between a young black man and a young black woman in london he's working as a photographer she is as a dancer and they meet become friends become very close and eventually kind of enter into a romantic relationship it's written from the perspective of the nameless man um but it's written in the second person so it takes on this kind of like almost a love letter quality and it is very much a romance i guess in that way about their relationship the relationship's really centered um in the book but it also touches on a lot of topics around mental health around the reality of living in a black body um particularly in london in the uk it's kind of painful and beautiful it's just so tender um the writing was like exquisite like every sentence in here you could probably underline it had these like poetic kind of repeating refrains that i really really enjoyed i think because it's a short book having that more poetic style did work because you can kind of take your time with it i thought the exploration of their relationship was really well done because it's not just about like 
a romance um like i say they're best friends and it really looks at that move between best friends to romance and really like the important thing is their intimacy despite what stage of their relationship they're in they have this like deep meaningful connection and intimacy with each other and that was just beautiful to read about but as i say it also has these more much more tender painful moments um i felt so moved by our protagonist's pain like when he lives in this like constant fear and dread of being like harmed um by the police particularly but just knowing he's constantly under threat because of the body that he's in and his struggle with like being told over and over again that you know he is something he is dangerous or he is aggressive and having to reconcile that with how he feels about himself and he really kind of does go down into like the pits of depression at parts of this book and it was so raw so honest like honestly so powerful really made me like feel things obviously i could never know what it feels like to be the victim of like racism or prejudice but yeah i thought that the author articulated that as far as i can say so well because i felt so moved by it but yeah but then again it's like not all really sad and depressing there's these like beautiful moments of community throughout the novel our narrator is really trying to just find like peace and contentment um, and we see how that's difficult for him but then we see the places that he does sometimes feel that and um, yeah it was just literally gorgeous i would recommend everyone to read this it really blew me away just so beautiful in so many ways i read oreo by fran ross um which was a strange book in fact so i was talking about my you choose what i read in march video which is a video i do every month and i always end up like reading more than just the book you choose because they're like fresh in my brain i think so you chose the scapegoat which i've talked about but then the last two books i'm going to talk about these two were also in that video and i read them anyway so this is a strange book a very strange book um it's a retelling of the theseus myth it was published in 1974 and we follow a young woman called christine known as oreo who has a black mother a jewish father she's grown up in philadelphia with her maternal family and never known her father and then when she gets to kind of be a young adult she journeys to new york to try and find her father and so it has that really like epic quest feel to it kind of a satire so it's very like ridiculous and funny she'll meet these like exaggerated caricature characters these like crazy obstacles these like unbelievable ridiculous escapes that she makes from it um so it made it a really fun read and it did kind of make me laugh and i thought again fran ross wrote in a very like innovative style it felt very like vibrant and yeah it was just a fun experience reading it because oreo is a really funny character and you're just sort of along with the ride with her but towards the end i think because i didn't know anything about the theseus myth i think fran ross was probably doing quite like clever things and like a modern take on it and they just went so over my head i don't feel like i understood the last couple of chapters of this book or understood like how they were relevant and i think in hindsight i would have preferred to have read the myth of theseus and then read this because i think i could have got a lot more out of it i've heard like really good things and really bad things about this and i'm like maybe is it just that people who've read the myth or can at least understand how she is playing with the myth enjoy it and then people who haven't are like what the hell did i just read that's my theory i don't know let me know if you've read it and what you think but yeah i gave it three stars because i didn't not enjoy it and i thought it was really smart and really funny but i can't give it any higher because i couldn't really like get invested in any of the characters or or the plot at the end of the book because i did not understand it and then finally i read what you want to see by Kristen lepionka my new favorite thriller author as i keep mentioning i just talked about her in my haul because i bought the third one um so i'll keep this brief this is the second book in the roxanne weary pi series set an ohio private investigator called roxanne weary who's this like kind of a badass obviously has a drinking problem because all pis have to she's bisexual so she has like ongoing relationships throughout the series with different people that i really enjoy the mystery in here was really interesting um one of her clients who she's been paid to spy on by her fiance ends up dead and obviously they think that the woman's fiance did it and roxanne doesn't think he did so she has to solve it it was satisfying there was like a twist at the end that i didn't see coming I just love the characters i'm invested roxanne for life okay well that is all the books that i read in march thanks so much for watching please do let me know what the best book that you read in march was or the worst if you're feeling in more of a negative vibe today that's okay and yeah don't forget to leave me a question in the comments or on my instagram if you're interested for my 3k q a thanks again for subscribing if you are new here or if you are old here my story graph and my instagram are linked down below and i'll see you in my next one bye